Alright, so this video is going to be focusing on the Unity side of getting your eco mod into your game. It's not going to cover animations just yet, but uh, this will get you started. So first thing we're going to do is get Unity open here. Create a new 3D project. We'll just call it YouTube. So now we're just going to wait for that to open. Alright, so now that we got our project open, we're going to do a few things here. First of all, let's get our Unity assets in here. So with that, I'm going to import a custom package. And I'm going to go to where I have my eco mod kit installed. Now out of these, you need this one. I'm just going to import that package. Yeah, we can do all of it. That's fine. <clears throat> Alright, so now we have the eco stuff in here. I'm going to go to the point where I actually... Let's first open up the template scene. Now inside your hierarchy, you have the template scene with the items and objects. They start off as disabled. So you're going to want to check this box to enable them. The object is where you'll be aligning your model for inclusion in the game, and the item is going to be where you put the icon, which you'll see in your uh, toolbar. So first things first, we'll click on the object. If you go into your scene view, you press F, it'll focus on the object. So there's the object there, these are the little previews for the icons, so while you're working on one at a time you can disable the other one. Then you can press F again to focus back in. So this is the block that you're going to want to align your models to for them to be in the proper locations in the game. So now that we have that done, I'm going to import the door model. So import new asset. Going to find it where I placed it. Right here. So there's the door itself. Now I'm going to import the textures. Alright, so first things first, we need to rename the sample object. Now you'll notice that in both of these you have sample item and sample object. Whatever you rename these two, it has to match what your script files are looking for. So in this I have walnut window door object. So you're gonna want that right there to match what you put here. So walnut windowed door object. And here walnut windowed door item. We can delete sample 2 item, we don't need that. Um, let's see here, alright, so we got the object, we're going to drag the model, parent it underneath the object. So now you can see the model of it right there. I'm going to go into the object, we need some materials, so I'll just drag this albedo up here and attach it to the renderer. If you click this little drop down, down box, this is the material editor right here. I'm going to attach whatever we have for 
all of our texture mapping. As for normal textures go, you need to use this fix now button to mark it as a normal map. Now, as far as lining it up goes, you pretty much just have to eyeball it. So I'm going to bring it up on the y-axis by, let's say, 0.5. And it seems to be lining up well. Whenever you see that clipping between the objects in the scene, that usually means they're occupying the same location. So the bottom of this cube is going to be where it connects with the ground in the game. So I've got this lined up here. And once you have the object lined up, all you really have to do is take the item that you renamed, which is the cube here, and you'll notice if I uncheck the collider and the renderer, it goes away. So what we're actually going to do now that we have our door lined up with the cube, so that in world space it's going to be in the right location, I'm just going to get rid of these components by clicking the gear icon and remove component, remove component. So now we don't see that uh, mesh or collider of that box. And once we have this in here, we're going to want some collision. So let's add component. Let's do just a standard box collider. If you don't know what you're searching for, you can actually go through here under physics. There's a bunch of different colliders. Just do a box collider. It's going to try to auto shape it to roughly fit the mesh. And that looks good enough to me, so that's fine. Now we're going to go up and into the item. So under the item, we're actually going to remove the object and enable the item now. And as far as the scene controls go, which is something I probably should have mentioned, you can scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can hold left alt and hold left click to rotate around an object you're focused on. And left alt and right click will actually allow you to zoom as well. If you need to move in reference to what you're looking at, just click the middle mouse button and that drags it around. If you find yourself offset, you can just select the item you want, go back into the scene view, press F again, it'll focus on the object. So now that we have our object here, we're going to go into the foreground. This is where we're going to put our image for the icon. So I'm going to go down here into my project and import another new asset. And I'm going to want the image I made. So we'll take this image and import it in. Now when you import the image you're using for the icon, go up here, when you have it selected, go to the texture type, and make it a sprite 2D and UI. Apply that. Go back to the foreground under your items box, and drag that up and into this field here. Now we have a red color over it, so if you just select that color bar and drag it up to the white, just make it clear. Now there is the icon that you're going to see on your hotbar in-game. And with our object made, and our item made, uh, in the older versions I read that you needed to manually disable these items but I believe I read that it will do that for you automatically now. So all that's left to do is, you see this template scene, we're actually going to want to rename the scene. So if we go under File, and we Save Scene As, um, let's just call it uh, YouTube Door. When that's done, you'll see the scene name changes right here. That's pretty important because on the forums I read that if you create multiple mods with the same scene name you will not be able to render them all properly or it just won't boot all together. So as a safety precaution just do that. So now with our scene renamed 
we're going to go under modkit build current bundle and this is the item once we save this that we're going to put on the server so I can put it right here in assets I suppose you can link it directly to your server directory if you just want to go to your server go into the mods and put it wherever I keep mine under a folder called my stuff it's pretty descriptive I'd, I'd think so in here I'll just make a new folder Let's call it YouTube test so we'll call this YouTube test save it now it's going to finish the exporting alright now that we're done exporting we can actually close down unity here, here so as long as your object name has that and then your item name has that same prefix with just item at the end instead of object it should read everything properly so we're also going to want to make sure that our object and whatever other C sharp files we need for the mod are in there with it so if I was to copy these paste them in here or the C sharp files you need are going to vary depending on the item obviously so with your scripts and your unity modkit exported bundle this will now be able to load up on your server so if I take everything I showed you and just delete this because I already have that project finished here you will see that if you load up a server your mod will now be visible in the game and the naming scheme that you use for it will be what you use for the admin command to spawn it so let me load up a world here real quick and then I will show you what I mean alright so here I am in my test server here I'm going to use a command to spawn it in so I'm going to give walnut windowed door Now you can see there's the icon that we made under that foreground item icon location. And place that there. You can see there's the door. The window I had to add in Unity separately because the program I was using to do the models and whatnot would not let me make a window in it. But for that window, all I did was create a cube inside of Unity, line it up with the insides of the door frame here, create a custom shader, um, give it the material properties of basically a clear see-through window, and parent it underneath the door so that it stayed with it. Um, and that's about it. If there's any questions, let me know, and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you.